Nigel Shaw is a player probably best known to the UK because of his match with Gary Kasparov in 1993. Didn't win it, but again, that far was some achievement in itself that we all agree. This is possibly the favourite game I ever played in my life against him. It's uh, in my life, not only just against him. <laughs> it was against him from 1985 in Banyaluka, which was then quite a pleasant town before it got torn to pieces by civil war in Yugoslavia, as we called it. They tend to be more specific in dividing the areas up. We call it Yugoslavia. Began as follows. Knight f3. Knight f6. 2c4. b6. Short was always a hedgehog stroke Queen's Indian kind of guy. g3. c5. Insisting upon some kind of, sort of hedgehog or double fianchetto formation. Bishop g2. He fianchetted as well. Bishop b7. Castles. e6. Knight c3, bishop e7. Already a major parting of the ways now because d4 is the move in inverted commas, which after c takes d4, queen takes d4, takes us into the recognized hedgehog territory where black will play pawn to d6, pawn to a6, knight to d7, and crouch. Somebody once came up with the idea, I think he must have been on something at the time, I had a few drinks, that uh, the formation resembles a crouching hedgehog. Maybe you can't see it neither, but that's what they said. That's how it got its name. Or the Pinsvin, as they call it, out in uh, Scandinavian countries. B3 instead. A double fianchetto. Castles. Bishop B2. One other thing you'll learn from this game is that quiet openings don't necessarily lead to quiet middle games. D5. E3. Knight BD7. Queen e2, queen c7, rook a c1, vague general developing move, but it turned out to have quite an unexpected bite to it that move, don't forget how placid things look at the moment, life will change, a6, and nobody's got a, a kick over the halfway line yet but things are about to change, d3, Preparing, of course, the advance e4. Bishop c6. Found out afterwards that this is still a theoretical position after my next move e4. And somebody against somebody else, reasonable player, who played pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4, and then a queen b7 or something. But his next move was, seems rational enough, d4, attacking my knight. And the knight has to shift, and then he goes e5, and we have a kind of, well, King's Indian formation with colours reversed. He likes space, he likes common sense. But one of his weaknesses, his erstwhile trainer, Grandmaster Dr. John Nunn, suggested was his tendency to underestimate opponents' attacks. So I did not go backwards, so I went forwards. Knight d5. If I had, just repeat, if I had gone back to D, B1 or D1 just after E5, there's no problems at all for Blackman. <clears throat> but into D5 we go. For the fun of it. Why not? Took it. If I take back with the E pawn, it looks like I'm getting the piece back because his bishop is attacked. If I move it, if he moves it, excuse me, get my colours right, I take the one on E7. But the bad news is that he traps my queen. There we here. I can delay the agony for one move by attacking his queen. But he just moves it back one square, queen to c8. And she's gone. So, to go back a few moves to where we were before that variation. Knight d5. He took it. And I took it back with the c pawn. C takes d5 which doesn't get the piece back, but it does get a whole bunch of pawns. Bishop moves, bishop back to b7. Knight takes d4. And this is one of quite a few games we're going to be looking at, where the theme of getting a knight to f5, even if only briefly, in front of the opponent's king, will be seen to be something of a compensatory factor in itself for material. Kasparov once said to me that getting a knight on f5, established on f5, in front of the opponent's castled king, 
is often worth one pawn. I've never heard that said by anybody else before. A lot of the things he taught me were... Uh, I worked with him on some other v DVDs and videos years ago. Were uh, familiar, but that was his insight, I think. So, two pawns for a piece. What's going on? Black cannot take that knight because his queen has dropped off this unexpected dose of poison on the rook ac1 move. We saw a few moves back. What's going on? Two pawns, central majority. Short told me at this stage he still thought he was doing well. That was after the game. Rook fe8. Logical developing move. Into f5 we go. Already ideas of advancing the central clump of pawns are there. Bishop f8, a regrouping. Quite a standard regrouping in not only hedgehog formations, many formations. Black may play g6 and re fianchetta the bishop on g7 later on. What to do? Well, he's the one with the threat at the moment because of my queen vis a vis his rook on e8. My pawn on d5 is hanging to a bishop or a knight. To a bishop. So, knight back to e3. Regrouping. And the plan now is f4, e5, and just kick ass with these pawns. <laughs> 